While drones dominate the sky, militaries have also experimented with autonomous robots on land and underwater. Russia's Uran-9 unmanned ground vehicle was first tested in Syria. Armed with cannons and missiles, it promised autonomous firepower. The reality was messier. Communication failures, navigation problems and limited situational awareness. Ground warfare, it turned out, was harder to automate than airspace. On the Baltic Sea, German and NATO engineers have been testing something called a Grey Shark, an autonomous underwater vehicle designed to protect critical infrastructure stretching across the Baltic Sea. The Grey Shark is the fastest AUV in its class, with an operational speed of 18 km per hour and capable of covering a distance of up to 1,100 nautical miles. Grey Shark is an autonomous underwater vehicle designed not just to explore but to protect our oceans, our infrastructure, and our lives. The Grey Shark is fully autonomous. Besides monitoring underwater infrastructure, it's also capable of looking for mines and anti-submarine warfare. Looking for mines, search and rescue, and anti-submarine warfare, so we can look for and listen for submarines, for example. Uh, the Grey Sharks don't have to be swimming to do that. They can actually be sit sitting on the ocean floor and just listening. And then if it listens to what it thinks is a submarine, the Grey Shark can then surface, put its antenna up, and then tell uh, a control station somewhere in the world it's found a submarine. And it can also give the position of where it thinks that submarine is. Once it locates a threat, the same information is conveyed to a control station somewhere else in the world. The Grey Shark can also autonomously detect and track submarines in the Baltic Sea. In the United States, quadruped robots developed by companies like Ghost Robotics have been tested with mounted rifles. Even when these systems are remotely operated, the optics do matter. A four-legged machine carrying a weapon doesn't look like a tool, it looks like a predator. And perception in warfare is power. Today, nearly every major military power is investing in autonomous robots. The United States insists that its systems keep humans in the loop. China, on the other hand, openly embraces AI-enabled warfare. Israel integrates autonomy tightly into its defense doctrine. Turkey has emerged as an autonomous drone superpower. Russia, despite setbacks, continues aggressive development. There is no binding international ban on lethal autonomous weapons called laws. Years of UN discussions on this topic have led nowhere because regulation takes time and we aren't slowing down the development of these weapons. In light of the tragedy that is armed conflict, it is urgent to reconsider the development and use of devices like so-called lethal autonomous weapons and ultimately ban their use. This starts from an effective and concrete commitment to introducing ever greater and proper human control. No machine should ever choose to take the life of a human being. Now, autonomous technology has existed in warfare for a long time. Israel's anti-aircraft Iron Dome and the Patriot defense systems use radar and LIDAR tech to autonomously track and target incoming aerial threats. The Ukraine war has become the de facto testing ground for military technologies since the conflict began in 2022. It's not overstating things to say that it has changed the rules of conflict. Ukraine's deployment of a large number of cheap remote drones against battle tanks and for covert raids behind enemy lines have redefined battle preparedness Standard drones are unmanned, but not autonomous. It has changed warfare fundamentally, especially when you look at how the full-scale invasion started in 2022, and we had World War I-style you know, tanks shooting at each other and people fighting in trenches, all the way to today, where we have a kill zone that is anywhere from 5 to 20 kilometers in Ukraine, and nothing survives in there. And whatever tries to penetrate into that kill zone, be it drones or um, armored vehicles, it will get destroyed within minutes and hours. 
Since war in Gaza broke out in October 2023 and later in Lebanon, Israeli's military has increasingly deployed a robotic version of Caterpillar's D9 bulldozer in a bid to enhance its field operations and reduce risks to its troops. While the dozer is technically remote controlled, it can accomplish a number of tasks like building a defense wall autonomously. It can do uh, autonomous missions, not just driving from point A to point B, but also the combat engineering task can be done uh, autonomously. Uh, for example, building a defense wall can be done uh, just by pressing two buttons and it will do the back and forth activity until it builds in the right height and the right length of the defense wall, it will build it by itself. The fear of drone attack has become so ubiquitous in the Russia-Ukraine conflict that Ukraine has begun using unmanned evacuation vehicles to pull out wounded soldiers. It's a dystopian scenario, a wounded soldier being ferried to safety on an autonomous vehicle is essentially at the mercy of the UAV on the ground to avoid detection by a UAV in the air. From UAVs to robots modelled on sniffer dogs, Ukraine has also been deploying dog-like robots to sniff out landmines. It's been using these to replace soldiers for perilous missions like spying on Russian trenches or detecting mines. Low on the ground and therefore difficult to detect, these robot dogs use thermal imaging to inspect enemy trenches or the inside of buildings in combat zones. Uh, especially in this warfare uh, where you have a lot of drones in use and can't send people in. Uh, you can bring with the dog, especially in urban environment uh, because of the speed. So the uh, bad two dog uh, have a swarm capability. So you can deploy up to five dogs who walk and uh, patrol autonomous or controlled uh, and secure a whole area on the front line in urban environment or tra um, fields, um, especially in urban environments, to be honest.